Good morning. Hi, I'm Birdman Mel, and I am so happy you joined us. Today, we're going to have fun and take a break from this tragic world that we're in, the things that are going on. I know many of you are affected much more than we are here in mid-Missouri, and we don't make light of that. But through my life, I've used the phrase, nature is a stress reliever from God. Take time today to listen to the birds sing. It never has that been more appropriate. But the birds we're going to talk about today is this guy. Okay, first question, and we're going to have lots of prizes I tell you about. Who is this guy? What is the most common hummingbird in North America? What is in the most states in the U.S.? And tell me where he came from. And remind me, we'll tell you the answer in just a bit. And I tell you what. Some of you asked, do hummingbirds sing? Well, I don't know about you, but I call that a song. And I think that's God's way of letting the hummingbird communicate. And I know when the male talks to the female, she sure thinks so. So when you hear that sound, I call it a song. You might call it a squeak. That's a great way to go. Hey, I want to welcome. I know we have lots of people all the way from California to Maine, Florida to Minnesota joining us today, as well, of course, our great crowd in central Missouri here in the center of Missouri, both Columbia and Mexico, Missouri. And I want you to know the info I'm going to share is going to be fun. It's going to be general. Many things are going to be free. Uh, it's just things you can do with your family, with your children. Get You know, we're all spending way too much time on electronics. Let's get outside and teach nature in God's nature. It's part of what I'm going to try to do. Today and always, every Saturday, we're going to have over $500 worth of prizes. Hey, remember these from last week? Thank you, Sheltered Wings. They are the distributor that we get Vortex Optics from. And every week, we're going to give away a free pair of these binoculars. I love them, man. They're my favorite. That you can get from any of your local wild bird suppliers. And the best thing about Vortex, Aspects, Brome, the Songbird Essentials products we're going to show, you won't find them anywhere for less money than you will your local retailer. But enough of the commercials. Uh, you do want to participate. The more you participate, the automatic techno wheel, I don't know what they're using, it's going to pick, it doubles your chances. So ask some questions, give some answers, double your chances. Okay, let's look down here. Forgive me, I'm kind of old, I got to have some na notes. I do want to talk about some fun activities. And the first one, I'm so proud, my grandson, Ollie, made this hummingbird last night. And it's his foot, it's his hand, and just a little marker after that. So try this. It's really cool, okay? And hummingbird is our topic this week, but I'm also each week going to take time to address the hot topics, whatever you want to talk about. And uh, we just want to help you enjoy nature together. I do want to stress, and forgive me, one last commercial, go ahead and do business with those independent retailers. The wild bird supplier in your town, the nursery that has the plants, the hardware store that's locally owned that has the products. All of us, including us in Columbia, are essential businesses that are delivering animal, pet, wild bird seeds to your door or you're picking up on our curb. So take advantage of that in your local market. They're there to serve you and most of all, most of those guys know as much or more than old Birdman Mel. So turn to those wild bird suppliers in your local market. One of the things I want to make sure we talk about, uh, and I don't want to forget, locally owned owners, if you haven't got in your SBA loan, do it. If you need the newest form, email me. I'll send it to you, and if you need help, we are here to help you. Now, let's go to your questions. That's what's most of all here. The first question I got was, how are the Hummers now? Are they in Pennsylvania? Well, I tell you what, they're close. On the map I looked at, they're in New Jersey, and they're in uh, uh, just south of you, so be ready. They're coming your way. Georgia asked, are they there? Hey, man, they are there. We'll tell you how to get them. Western Kentucky, you ask, are they there? We'll tell you how to get them. There's a map we'll be posting that says the normal arrival date for hummingbirds in your area. But I tell you what, folks, we're going to do better than that. We're going to put on the map your hummingbirds. So when you see hummingbirds in your, e your area, email us. We'll put one on the map so that we can work together. Won't your kids love seeing that dot go up for you? It'll be a fun way to get involved together to map hummingbirds as they're through the whole U.S. And hey, yeah, you folks out west, you've got other birds, and we'll talk about those, although we're not going to go into a lot of detail per bird 
because most tips to attract are the same no matter where. But uh, you know, those of you that have a roof as a those uh, uh, those sorts of birds, I know you're going to get to put yours up already, a lot of you, but us with the ruby throats, which are, e unfortunately, east of the Rockies, that's the main one we get, that's what we're going to uh, talk a lot about, because those are the ones I know. Somebody asked, do you put red food coloring in hummingbirds? Does it harm it? I'll address that, but I'll tell you right now, if you don't learn nothing else, no way, Jose. If red food coloring in your M&Ms is bad for you, in a hummingbird eats the equivalent of 256 Big Macs a day due to their metabolism, why in the world would you put red food and uh, put uh, it on there as far as uh, what you need? Are we doing all right there, technical assistant? Okay, made me a little nervous there for a second. We're also going to do a map on Orioles. So, uh, in the last thing, uh, you guys know I love Purple Martins. Go to pmca.org. They've got a great map for Orioles. And go to Birdman Mail for some fun tips on all this stuff, okay? That's birdmanmail.com. Somebody said, is it true that hummingbirds can't walk? Yep, you'll never see one of them walking around. But their feet are so strong, they can hang on to a branch and not fall off as they sleep. So think about that. Uh, they, they actually go into tuber where when it's cold, they got it like chickadees, they take that body temperature way down so that they can survive. Okay, somebody sent in a question that said, I thought you said you could attract hummingbirds with bananas? What in the world do you mean, Birdman Mel? Yep, this old banana here, you can get hummingbirds with it. For a long, long banana, mm, they're pretty good, but uh, Put the peel out, and I've been saying put your peels, rotten fruit, you're ready to throw out our bed somewhere. You want to do that because what happens? Fruit flies come, and fruit flies are the one of the sources that or can be, if you watch hummingbirds, and we've posted some video on the site, they don't just eat nectar. They go and get little microscopic insects for their vitamins, their minerals, their protein. So put that out in a, a great way to attract hummingbirds and butterflies. I want to show you something here real quick. You ever have those moments when you wish, why didn't I think of that? Well, there's a product called Humbug that is made to put those rotten bananas, fruit, and stuff into. And it has little slots, and it becomes basically a way to put away. Don't put it right by the patio, because if you're out there having a glass of wine, you're going to find fruit flies like your wine, too. Okay, But just uh, put it away uh, out there and... You know, it's a little harder to see those hummingbirds grab those uh, little fruit flies, but I guarantee you it works, and they'll do it. But put them on the plate, too, so you see. I had that hooked up, and we're going to give the whole thing away with a little test tube holder we'll talk about later. This little thing here is a nectar protector. Ants can't swim. Ants do like fruit. So I always hang this above my uh, uh, fruit fe feeders and things like what I just did there. And I'm giving these off the screen to my daughter, Becky, who is our in-house technical assistant, and also Vanna. And my wife, Bev, is passing me some of your notes and your questions. I do have to tell you, we got a lot to cover, and they tell me I can't go all day. I can't imagine why we wouldn't talk all day. But, uh, you know, I'm going to try do my best to slow down and make sure you guys are, are getting what I'm talking about. Okay? So, it said I just moved to a new area. I've, I've had, before, I had several hummingbirds. Use sugar water. What do I do? How do I attract them? Uh, I can't do as many plants as I used to. Well, I'm glad you added plants because to me, plants are one of the keys to attracting hummingbirds. And we'll go into which ones work the best and which ones that I know your locally owned garden centers and hardware stores can help you pick out. And that's the difference versus the big boxes. They have the same things everywhere. It's all about, most of all, native plants from your area and then the appropriate style plants, and we'll talk about which ones hummingbirds love. How about that? Hey, one of the things I mentioned in a preview is uh, one thing you can do is go grab your Christmas box and, uh, you know, tie that big red ribbon around the old oak tree. Now, one of my assistants is saying, tear it around, Mel. The, the, you got the wrong side out. Yeah, our bows kind of fade it, but you tell you what, hummingbirds don't care about what the bow looks like. They just go to bright red. So get that big old bow out. Tie it by your hummingbird feeder and shoom, when they're going over, they're going to come down and see you. Okie doke. Uh, what kind of flyers uh, do you put out? We'll talk about that. Well, one thing I want you to do is when I mention a, a, a plant, particularly the inexpensive uh, annuals, don't put one here, one there, one here. Your money's much better spent when you're sowing seed or putting plants out. Make a big old splotch. 
you know, envision a stop sign that you're making out of red plants and it says, yo, hummingbirds, right here, there's some really good stuff. So that's what you want to do and that's what your local nursery will help you do, okay? One of the things I do is I really believe in several organizations, and I want you to think about, as you do your stuff, what the National Wildlife Federation does. I'm really happy that our home, all our businesses are certified habitats, and uh, they tell you to have a place to reproduce, have water, have food, have protection from predators. So we'll be talking about all that sort of thing. But before we keep going on hummingbirds, and hey, I forgot to tell you, favorite book here, turn it to H is for hummingbirds with the children out there. And as it says, hummingbirds flap their wings so fast that they sound like bees, and they can fly backwards. Did you know they can do that? No other bird can. But I tell you what, we're going to turn it back one to G is for goldfinch. How come? Because a lot of you are telling me, and this is what's going on, and you say, hum it says here, hummingbirds love a special food called thistle seed. Normally really true. They live in groups. If you see one, there's probably a bunch. And that is really true. So feeders that feed a lot of birds, they like to hang out together. There is no social gathering restrictions on the hummingbirds right now. So the more places they can get together, the more, you, or excuse me, on any birds, so the more they can do. So a fun book to use. But folks, I got to tell you, and I'm going to make probably some folks in the, in the audience a little frustrated at me in the industry. Bottom line is Niger is normally a great seed. The government rightfully requires us to have it cooked, so no not just weeds. I'm sorry, uh, most of it comes from India and they turned up the furnace too much, okay? It's kind of cooked too much, there's not good oil in there. So instead of that, hey, why not buy American, okay? The thing that I recommended in all the thistle tubes, and I know your local wild bird suppliers have it, is a fine chop sunflower mix, okay? They like it just as much and it's really, really good for them and a lot of other birds like it. Okie doke. I was gonna mention a couple feeders that I really love to do. The folks from Axpex, I showed you their tube feeder last week. I love it, and I'm going to show you why in a second. But they've got one with a dome on it, a tray under it. If, if it fits your budget, this is a lifetime guarantee feeder, and it's made in Rhode Island. It, I mean to tell you, I love it. And most of your local Wellbird suppliers are going to have this thing, okay? Real good deal. The thing I do, though, is, you know, don't forget this in all your feeders. These come out, fill them from the top one time, the bottom the other. So if you got Niger you need to eat, use, get rid of it or save it and then mix it back in after you get some good stuff to do it. And my favorite way to fill this little thing, let me grab this here. I got a new scoop. My son worked with a local inventor here in Missouri, and that's where most of our products come from. Smart folks out there in America and a huge mark, a percentage of them made in America. But this old scoop, you just put it over the thing, you put the seed in, and wow, down she goes. You betcha. I like that a lot. So keep it in mind, uh, hey, uh, it's a pretty fancy studio here. I was holding it in my kind box from tomorrow this morning. Uh, maybe if enough of you guys uh, reach out and share this thing, maybe kind will send me a case of, of these things. I don't know. I liked it. I've lost about 15 pounds eating them while we're gone. So enough of that stuff about finches. We'll have a whole program later just on goldfinches. So now let's get back. Oops, I forgot. Got a couple of other feeders I love. This little guy here, we had the clingers. Uh, Coles, bird seed had us do this. They can just hang on there and clean. Like that a lot. And really, really like, you know, one thing about going to the, the, the uh, mix with the sunflower in it, you know, squirrels don't like Niger, so you're never worried about that. So you're going to want to baffle that thing as we switch to the sunflower. And then, of course, Rome has an incredible world's best lifetime guarantee squirrel proof feeder. So keep that rascal in mind. One other feeder thing I want to remember is last week I should have told you. We were talking about feeding cardinals different birds. This feeder here is called a Vista Dome. This, and this guy right down here, this is from Aspects. Again, available lots of wild bird stores. Love it. And a tray like this are my favorite two ways to feed the birds. Why? Because it's a great way to just put out a little bit a day. So the coon, raccoons, the squirrels, those kind of guys don't get it. So remember tray feeders and remember that Vista Dome because I love these. In my yard, and we'll be talking about migrating birds next week, these trays are what the birds come first to. I think they feel safe. They can look around. They can't see the cats. And God, folks, keep your cats inside. They are the biggest killer of songbirds in America. Okay? So remember that, please. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a tip I got to share. Okay? Let me get down through here. Where am I at now? Okay, enough of that. Let's get to our birds. Okay? Remember? Hey, it's time to get humming. And another quiz real quick here. Okay, I got two hummingbirds here. 
Right hand, left hand. Which one is the male? And these are from my great friend Margaret Cobain up north. She uh, hand sculptured uh, the models for these and we have them hand painted. So great, great things. So I'm gonna use our birds all the time for, uh, for learning tools. So which one is the one with the red under it and which one is not? Is that the male or the female? Okay, and which hummingbird is this that I'm holding up right here? This old boy. Margaret does, you know, some of you guys out west, hit, hit. This isn't in the Midwest. Got this guy. So uh, look them over, give us some answers, win some prizes. Okay, I'm sure somebody already punched it. So I'm going to give the answer. In every bird species, the one with the bright red, he's the man. It's our time. Love is in the air. We got to tell the lady. I'm the one for him. So have some fun. I know I look like a crazy old goofball, but it's about enjoying the nature that God put around us. And I've heard the rumor, it's certainly true in this town, and I think, unfortunately, all over the country, many of you have children at home. So I'm hoping these things I do, these crazy annex I do, can help you get outside, get away from the electronics, and teach your kids to, and children, forgive me, to enjoy the nature that's around us. Okay? So... Let's talk plants, one of my favorite things. The best way to attract hummingbirds is with per, uh, perennial native plants. Think about it. God put them plants where you live. Doesn't it make sense? The bugs that are on there, the insects, the uh, everything is right. Birds will come to them. They'll eat them. They won't become invasive and take over your, your whole yard. The nursery people in your part of the world know what to recommend to you. That's why you go to a local guy. I'm going to tell you what I do here in Missouri. The biggest thing, forgive me for looking away, is I start with, and this is not a native, but it was the one, only one that was blooming at the nursery. I start with a columbine. Now, why would I do that? They bloom this time of the year. So you want to have a sequence of plants that start in the very first of the year. Then I have drop more scarlet honeysuckle. I have trumpet vine. I have cardinal climbers. I have lobelia, which is cardinal plant. It really likes wet feet. Only put it in just a couple of my drainage areas. And the one that's easiest to grow and you can share with everybody, Monarda or Bee Bonds. And then as the season goes on, my milkweeds, my coneflowers kick in. But think about having plants all the way through that kick in. And again, only your local guys know what to do and what is how to sequence that for you in your market. Okay, the other thing is, wow, Columbine's about the only thing that blooms here when the hummingbirds first come in. So what do I stage up behind that? Yeah, I work with my nursery, and I hang a fuchsia basket out. You want to talk about a stop sign for hummingbirds, you hang one of them big, red, droopy fuchsia things. They love them. And uh, the other thing is you pick plants, uh, good old-fashioned plants. Don't get those ones that are all scrunched up and all. The ones with a big open throat, like open throat petunias. Uh, this one happens to be one that's, you know... I like these. Again, I, there's other favorites. This is more of a tropical thing, but where it's warm, it's about this big old throat here. That's where the hummingbird, you know, he goes, the beak goes in here and zip, 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 zip. Mm, boy, that's good. You know, and the other thing is he goes in these, he's picking up those little bugs and stuff too. So it's a really cool deal for him. But you know, other ones that I kind of prefer, you know, you know, Bird Man Mel forgot to water this thing. I apologize to the nursery that uh, they gave it to me. But uh, it, cigar plants are one of the favorite. So uh, the other ones uh, besides uh, fuchsia is I use a lot of salvias. I use cigar plants. Then I use some of those exotics uh, on the patio once in a while. But don't forget what I said earlier. Big splotches. Think stop sign. Don't spread them out here and there if you want hummingbirds. Okay. More pad-like plants that hummingbirds and the butterflies love, and we'll have a, a program later on butterflies in this sequence, is Pinta, Lantana are two of my favorites. Somebody asked about geraniums. I use those for stop signs because we love the color, and most nurseries have them. They're easy to cut. Many of you are like my mom. You save cuttings, and hey, you don't even have to buy a great way to get them down in the air. We doing all right back there, Miss Beck? Okay. So let's go back to the... Uh, uh, I talked about the different sequences of the National Wildlife Federation program. Well, nesting is one of them. No, hummingbirds don't use nest boxes like we talk birds and everything. Uh, but they do and will use the nesting material. We doing all right there? Okay, fantastic. Uh, I will tell you, Birdman Mel never did Facebook till three weeks ago. So when my staff, technical people in my family enough. Okie dokie. And if we have a problem, hey, we'll stop. We'll go off the air and we'll come back on. Okay? And just let me know if that happens, folks. Okay? 
So hummingbird nesting material. This is the only one that has been recommended and approved by the Hummingbird Society. And hi, Ross Hawkins out there in Sedona. Thank you for that. Ross and his wife helped us test this. Some great folks in Texas recommended part of it. And tell you what, there's a lot of knockoff imitations from China and everywhere else. Don't use them. We put a lot of study into this. What's different? The material in this has a certain amount of oil in it so that we help the hummingbirds. And what does a hummingbird normally build its nest with? It will go out and gather moss and lichen and make a nest. And then it takes spider webs and white wraps it around it. And they'll wrap it around this too. But this is also thin for a reason. Why? Well, if it gets wet, you want it to instantly dry as soon as possible. You don't, you know, if some of those different products I see out there in a clump, you know, if, if a hummingbird grabs some of that wet stuff, it's actually not the best thing to put in the nest, okay? And it doesn't have the oil in it. So that's why this red deal here, it holds it, makes it skinny, and it draws them in. So make sure you use Songbird Essentials Hummingbird Helper, and we got refills for it, and you can get that from your local wild bird store, okay? But, uh, and you can get nest. You go look at a little fork in a brand somewhere is, a, is normally where you'll see a hummingbird nest. And I'll share some videos that, that Ross and his wife have taken for us and some other ones so you can share with your children what a hummingbird nest looks like. Little bitty old, you know, just a couple little bitty old PA type things in there. What's really great is we've had videos and photos where the female hummingbird goes and tucks in the egg with a hummingbird helper. And she does the same thing, I'm sure, with the moss, but I gotta talk about my stuff. Okay, so that's it for nesting. So what do we use to supplement and feed? And the ladies have been handing me a lot of questions here and I just saved them to now. Sorry to keep you waiting. Yeah, sugar works. One part sugar, four parts water. I will emphasize, make it be pure cane sugar, please. Uh, we found that that's the best nutritional source. Uh, there are some great products. Uh, and Ms. Beck, if you want to set mine up here on the table for me, I'd appreciate it that we market and other brands. So when I use our brand, of course, that's Songbird Essentials, and it's commonly available at your local retailer. In any products, yeah, I, I'm going to do that, but it's about listening to what I'm saying about what's right about it. And there, there are a few other products that do the same thing. So I mentioned about the red food coloring. Uh, we do that in this big can here, but it's pure cane sugar. And the other difference is it's finely ground. So you can instantly mix it. You don't have to boil it. It's safe to do right away, okay? Uh, do the same thing in clear. We got her in liquid. I have a lot of fun with this guy. You, if you're using sugar, whatever, I call this the super shaker nectar maker. Fill your nectar to there, your water to there. You shake it, you pour it, you store it. My wife loves it because she doesn't have a glass full of leftover nectar in, in the uh, thing. So super shaker, great thing. Guy down in Georgia invented it. Really, really like it. The other thing on nectar is cleanliness is next to godliness, and spoiled nectar will get rid of hummingbirds. Put this nectar fresh stuff in your feeder. We got directions on the site. Extends it out. If you go on, you know, uh, happen to go over to mom's or whatever, I know we're not traveling much now. Nectar gets bad. Clean that rascal out with water. Clean it good. We'll show you some brushes in a second. But make sure you move it because a hummingbird, it's like a DWI when they get mold mildew in them. It's like, holy moly, what hit me? And I almost hit that tree. So it's really, really important that you take time to clean it and take time to change that nectar every five to seven days. Okay, thank you so very much on that. Miss Dana, or Vanna, I'll let you take that away. Uh, so uh, we'll do other questions about uh, that, but uh, we're gonna go on to a couple feeders. What makes a good one? So we'll hand that little box up here right now. Uh, that there's my window ones, uh, or my, excuse me, they'll slow up. What I want to tell you is instead of buying one big old honking feeder, put out several small ones. It's kind of like that bringing them down thing. And some of my very favorite ones, and I'll, I'll take one of that big red ones out of that kit back there, that small one back in a second. But one of my favorite is the Aspects Hum Blossom. And uh, you know, what's good about all these feeders? Small, easy to clean. Okay, very, very important. Uh, one of my other favorites is the red bird feeder here. And you'll see yellow blossoms on here. I really prefer the feeders with the red, but there are a couple manufacturers out there that in mass that have so many yellow feeders. I found that once in a while the hummingbirds kind of look for one of them, so I'd have one of these out with that. Uh, the other thing is, hand me that one. This is my favorite baby for the money. It's called Big Red. Your, your wild bird stores, if they don't have it, they can get it. It actually comes with nectar in it. And you shake it, you put it out. But what's good about it that I love, all the feeders at Wild Bird Store, they're gonna have a big old mouth on them so you can clean them, really, really important. Same thing in the bottom. 
they're going to have parts that come out, and we got little brushes to go in there. And, uh, hey, keep them clean. You get more hummingbirds, and you don't hurt the hummingbirds. So very important stuff. Give me that big old box down there, Miss Beck. And uh, can't stress enough, uh, you know, over the years I've had a lot of friends help me and teach me a lot. Uh, I'm going to grab this right here. Uh, I want to give gratitude right now to Jay Whalen, who invented the... Uh, the uh, hummingbird, uh, the feeder that I'm recommending now, and this is called the Dr. JB's. And uh, a good friend, and, hey, what I got going on here, I got a big old red dome over that thing. Remember that stop sign? Bring them down, kind of lets the uh, nectar stay longer. I got an ant mode in here. Ants can't swim, kind of like we talked about in the fruit. Put it above it, they ain't gonna get to the nectar. There are some of the feeders we show have a built-in thing. I like those, but oftentimes they get empty. I find with these little guys, and clear is my favorite, because if I forget, I can see it's empty, but red helps draw them, so we got them both. Uh, but uh, fill it full of water, first thing's gonna happen, chickadee's gonna come by and say, well, that is so kind of you to put out a little water just for me. So we made them deep enough, a lot of moats too small, so that chickadee can drink, but yet water there to keep the ants out, okay? Other things as far as ants, grab me that last tray down there, back that little thing there, but. I want to make sure you understand feeders. Big wide mouth, made in America, goes into the dishwasher. Hey, I, my wife doesn't always like me to do that, but it's okay. This one here, Jay Whalen invented it. Really smart guy. Flyers pop off, real easy clean, but kind of complicated baffle system. But what it amounts to, swings in the rain, wind, doesn't leak. The other thing that happens, a couple of you ask about bees and wasps. Well, yeah, they'll come looking for it. So the thing is, Keep your feeders clean. Use a feeder like this one that has that. Grab me that big old flat top feeder. Here is that. This is another one I like. And Aspects makes some great feeders like this too. This is what I call a flat top feeder. Think about it. The nectar's down below. Hummingbird's got a tongue, and you'll see that in that glass feeder that I told you about before. He can get to it, but the bees and the wasps can't. Really cool deal. Okay, so that works good. A little amp mode here. Like this one. Whoops. There you go. Got a gas cap. You can actually figure, feed it. Uh, fill it in between and both aspects and, and this feeder have versions with the, the lip up off the edge so you can see that old boy in the back that's saying hey get me in the camera hey don't forget me back here so fun stuff but emphasize most of all guys doesn't matter what feeder keep them clean cleanliness is next to godliness okie dokie and then again there are neat little brushes to uh, reach in you know get that port thing here See, this is, there, this is like this, goes in there, does that. I like this long one. I got arthritis, it doesn't hurt my hands. We got the little ones too, stores too. But works really good, you can clean other stuff with these things. But uh, last thing, I wanna make sure, nectar, uh, a lot of folks use this nectar fortress. It, it's, uh, you just put it around the pole, it's a natural product that keeps the ants from going up. But uh, I still use the ant molds too, because my chickadees like them. And uh, you know, uh, sometimes I forget when I'm gardening, get dirt on this and stuff. But this is real good stuff from Sapphire Labs, really like it. Okie dokie. Whoa! Now let's move on and have some fun with, uh, okay, we talked about amps. They can't swim. You can make them amp molts out of tuna cans too. Put a little hook, goes through, double hook. You know, I ain't that smart. And, uh, for the price of an amp molt, you don't have to, but it's all about what could you build, save a few bucks, and have fun with the kids. So you can do that, those amp molts that way. And oh, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, we had one great big old one. Well, down in Texas, some of you boys, and I know we got a big crowd in Texas, hi guys, said you had so many ants that they died, they built a bridge, and they got around. So we made that big old one, and it's, it is really hot there, Arizona, although you ain't got many ants in Arizona. But, uh, you know, if you got a hot climate or in a hot summer, uh, that's why we got that, those big old honking ones, okay? Okay, we talked about bees. Yellow flyers, many people say, track them, so try to use a feeder that doesn't have them. Flat tops, that works. Other little trick uh, is make sure once they come, you clean it and you move the feeder. That'll help you get rid of them bees. A lot of you are sending me questions on bees. When do you put the feeder out? Folks, it's time. And what you want to do is, you know, we talked about that the map that we put out. You're going to look at that map, and you're going to see how close the hummingbirds are if you come back to the page. So let's just help each other, and we'll see those come out. I've always said tax day in Missouri. Give the government their due and, and, and your hummingbirds. But uh, now, together, we're going to have that interacting map then. So you're going to know, okay? Uh, let me look down through here. Window feeders. I do love window feeders. I don't know where they went, but... You know, Aspects make one of my favorites, and again, it's all about budget. Little bitty gym feeder, it's called, uh, that just sets on the window. 
bigger one called the Jewel Box. Uh, love both of those two feeders a lot. Uh, and we make some that I really like. The other thing we do, it's got a good old play. It's all about up close and personal. This is a way to teach your kids. So, Miss Beck, you give me one here. Two ways to get up close and personal. One is a hanger, American made suction cups, all American made here in beautiful Mexico, Missouri. Thank you, Pennsylvania. You made the suction cups. And then these test tube feeders we do. We've got a video up. You can see the hummingbird's tongue go all the way back in here, guys. It goes that far. These are really fun to work with children and grandchildren. You can put several in the refrigerator. We all perch if I get them down here where they can hang. They don't need a perch, uh, but I, I think my hummingbirds, you know, they get tired like old Birdman Mel. So they like a perch. And then we got these little dangles there to do it. But on this thing here, you can hang whatever feeder you want. You know, and you can even hang a fancy feeder like this thing here, but make sure that bottom comes apart like this guy. We call this our uh, faucet at Ruby, but the bottom comes apart so it's easy to clean. And again, your local bird stores have all that kind of stuff. Okie dokie. What have I missed? Oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you. Do you know that birds are swingers? And nope, 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 we're not going PG now. Uh, or uh, we're still going to stay PG. They love to swing. What it amounts to, when they first told me, I said, they don't need that. But the male hummingbird, he sits on a perch, and he will readily go to this little guy. And a gazillion Chinese knockoffs. These are handmade here in Mexico, Missouri. And there's a whole bunch about it that works that I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to tell them guys. But you put our swing out, and you can get it from your bird stores and your other independent suppliers. Put it next to them other things. You'll find out there's reasons why this is the number one seller. And yeah, we got some tweet heart versions for your loved ones. Uh, that we don't make because I needed to make uh, have a little better uh, uh, price point for you guys, but those have some of the same elements as that other one. And don't share the secret, please, if you figure it out. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so the other thing, give me the. I talked about all the stuff in copper is made here in Mexico. You can have some fun. You know that birds love the teeter totter, and we're going to talk about a, before we end a. Uh, uh, a, a hummingbird ring, and we do have a kit of a starter kit that's available. You'll see on our website, and, mo and it's not to sell you, it's for you to go to your local wild bird supplier to do that involve hummingbird rings. One best new product of the year, I'll show them in a minute. Chris, a fireman up north of Chicago, invented it. But for hummingbird rings, you'll see videos online of Eli, my grandson, and I feeding hummingbirds out of this rascal. A little bit harder to use, but really works really cool. And it can let you kind of slowly control where you want to put it. So I, I really, really like that thing. Okay, going to take a quick drink of water here so I can keep you going. Hope I'm not boring yet. Going to go a little longer than what my professional staff told me. I think people are still hanging on. If somebody give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, cut your throat off, I don't care, whatever I need to do. But quick question, what is America's favorite bird? Hint, 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 hint. Even where they don't have a baseball team like that. We talked about that last week. And you want to keep feeding uh, uh, the spring birds because, man, oh, man, are they hungry right now. And now the quick question, uh, who gives his mate a little bit of sunflowers if he has some out there? And you can do it by putting a little bit on those trays I talked about. So enough for that. We'll go from there. One thing I forgot about. Remember the four things in the yard, water, whatever. The thing right here will help you attract a lot of uh, hummingbirds. This is called a mini mister. You put this rascal on the end of a hose. It's got a little hook. You just hang it anywhere. Hummingbirds love to go through water. Think about it. You've been sticking your beak in flyers forever. Wouldn't you like to rinse that rascal off? So they will go through there. You, kids like it too, by the way. A really inexpensive way. Doesn't use but about a gallon an hour. Okay. You hang this thing up. Also, you know, put it out where the hummingbird can zip through, but also put it next to a, a, a tree or something where there's leaves. Because you'll see many, many of the birds we talk about next week will go in and be doing this rubbing and carrying on on the leaves and all. And they'll enjoy doing that. So uh, so keep that in mind. I think you'll find that, that, that they really, really like that thing. Okay? So uh, water is important to hummingbirds. Uh, in general, put out a bird bath no more than two inches thick, rough surface. Your, your local wild bird supplier is all over what you need there. Because uh, Water attracts, honestly, 10 times more birds than seed because there are a lot of birds that use water that don't necessarily eat seed from a feeder. But next week, we'll be talking about some birds that are coming in, uh, you know, from South America now, Central America, that eat different seeds in different kinds of feeders and some fruit, different fruits and different kind of feeders than what you normally think of and feed all year. So don't, don't, you don't want to miss that thing, okay? So let me see where in the world are right. Kids, uh, 
Kids Corner, well, I forgot to talk about the hummingbird rings. Okay, this rascal here, everybody needs one in America that's got hummingbirds. You put this on your finger, you know, right there, real simple. Uh, hummingbirds, come eat. And you say, oh, yeah, right. Well, you can't go outside and do this. That ain't going to work. We got little things, you know, you can put these right there. It's a little plexiglass thing we make here. And I, I got four different ones in this because when the grandkids come over, Eli wants one, Ollie wants one, Ev wants one, I want one. So we all end up having our own ring. So it helps you do that. Red's my favorite. So we also got a kit with all red. Got a little syringe, makes it easy to fill. Got that little port brush. But look at the videos uh, on the Hummingbird Ring. It is an incredible product. Now it's going to be the easiest to train them to when in August, September, when the hummingbirds get ready to migrate. But if you do that thing I talked about and have plants in a certain place, have a feeder in a certain place, set this, or just buy one, put it in a shot glass right there. Now don't put nothing in that shot glass other than the water. But you know, it just comes apart. You put a little nectar in there and you don't need that syringe. I, I did it forever. I just squeeze a little plastic cup, makes it easy. But uh, we wanted to make it foolproof for, for grandpa and grandma. So we put that kit together. Uh, again, nectar, clear, uh, no no dyes, don't need it. Got a, got a red ring here. And that's so true on so many feeders. Honestly, the only reason I use dyes is some consumers think they gotta do it. And we don't use dyes. We use ground carmine, which is little beetles. And uh, uh, it's the shells from them, and it gives them vitamins, minerals. I do got to say about nectar, I've asked many people, we don't add vitamins, we don't add minerals, we don't add foo-foo, this or that, because they're going to get that from the bugs. So forgive me, other folks, but uh, the experts I talk to say, you know, let's just do cane sugar, and then let's provide the right plants, and let's try to help there be some bugs. I forgot to say, go natural. In your yard, you want more birds, more butterflies, Quit using chemicals and stuff to the best of your ability. Ask your local uh, nursery, your lo local hardware store, hey, do you have organic things that are safe for the birds I can use if I have a pest problem? In your yard, I've not spread a pound of fertilizer on my yard. I only use corn gluten. I mow my yard high, four to five inches, keeps the weeds out, and corn gluten keeps the uh, annual ones that sprout from sprouting. So just a little tip, not about hummingbirds, but about having a yard that you can feel safe rolling in it with your kids, your pets, and uh, save you a lot of money too, because that gluten works really, really good. And they don't pay me nothing. Uh, probably ought to call them up. Hey, gluten people, if you want to send me a pallet or two, send her on. Just thought of that. Sorry. Okie doke. So hummingbird greens, really recommend you do that. Want to go real quick to fun uh, things that you can do with your children. Oh, I forgot on the hump. I forgot. Remember that Dr. JB's feeder? You want to hang that back to me? Uh, that, that Jay Whelan helped me? Well, I am so proud. My son, working with some good folks. If there's every time as a country we're going to need this rascal. What this did is we originally, this feeder here, well, you get more hummingbirds, you put that top here on it, okay? Then you get more, you put that top here on it. Then you guys out west, we sell lots of these 80 ounces out west. I use these every day. Uh, in uh, Missouri in August, September, you can switch the tops. So you buy one feeder and you can grow as it goes. Well, my smart son Grant came up with the idea, well, let's use those same jars. And we're, we got a base coming that, that the mode's being built that, you know, uh, rest of the year when hummingbirds leave and they leave this part of the world in late September, early October, and we'll cover that later. We put a little base on there. This makes a great water now with that great thing thing. And we got one coming, orange. Uh, we'll talk about what we're going to put in here uh, next week. But, you know, this attracts what? Somebody tell me what orange attracts, and you're going to be able to win a free prize, but it's on next week's program. Okay, another migrant. And then the end of the season, all them birds go back to South America. Use any of those jars, this big old guy, put bird seed in here. You got a great feeder. So this is called the Switchable Wild Bird Feeding System. It's uh, patent pending from uh, Songbird Essentials, and watch for it after May. A great way to buy one feeder with many bases. Sorry about that commercial, but man, budgets are tight, I understand, and I don't know. I thank God that he put that in Grant's head, because if it's ever time to have one feeder go a lot of ways, it's right now. So kids projects, some of the other fun things to do. Uh, and a little bit of commercial here, but quick question. What insect is a predator of the hummingbirds? Okay, hint, hint, anybody see? Okay, help your grandkids with this. Can you see it there back? Yep, yep, I won't tell you what it is. And I really like it. I like using these kits that a lot of people have from Wild Republic. They're in little insect tubes. Great way to have, you know, we go, the best way is go out, set in one spot, five minutes, 
and help your grandkids look around, see what all's there. Listen to what all's there. Touch what all's there. But sometimes it's raining. These little insect ticks are as cold like it is here in Missouri today. Thank God my Hummers aren't here. These little kids are really cool to do that. So do that. The other thing I do is my kids, my grandkids like to play cards. I love these cards from Adventure Publications. You know, go fish for a, what's it say, a blue-throated hummingbird. Go fish for an anna's hummingbird. You know, you could, add, you could mix up your card games that way. And can you imagine, I raise you three ruby throats, and you're going to counter me with two annas. So we could, you could have some fun. These are from Adventure Publication. Uh, the other thing I got here is some great folks that impact photographic. I never could do that Rubik's Cube thing. And as you're going to see, I have trouble with this. But a really cool little cube that has all the different hummingbirds in America in it. You know, it's got on here the blue-throated, and I think all these are here, the broadbill, uh, the rufus. I know that old boy's here. He's, he goes all the way up to uh, Alaska. I, I need, wish I could go with him because I'm probably not going to cruise for a while. I know I'm not. Costas, and forgive me, cruise lines, but uh, we got to get through this thing. So all different hummingbirds are on here. Uh, and write those down. Remember those because you're going to want to have that information, okay? Then we got little things. You can make your own hummingbird feeder out of a bottle. If you use one of these rascals, Biggest thing is make sure you fill it all the way up and, and, ha and put it in the shade. Not my favorite, but again, it's about budgets, it works, and hey, it's about helping you. Lastly, there is a cool puzzle here that I like. Again, got all the, got several different birds, got the ruby throat, got the calliope, got the annas, got the broad build. So a fun puzzle that your stores can get you from uh, different places. So I know you're glad we're about to wrap it up. I really, really hope that I made you smile today. That's one of our goals in all these different things. And uh, Ms. Beck, I think we have one more craft I want to make sure I share with people. And then we'll wrap this thing up. This is a craft we'll be posting that we make this out of parchment paper. And yeah, maybe I got something all messed up with him. Yeah, yeah Ms. Beck says I, uh, I put the wing on the wrong place. But, you know, grandpas have a way of doing that thing. And all the winners that on um, today will be posted, okay? And we're going to, if you're staying on, do, don't leave me because you're still eligible for that grand prize winner, okay? Uh, but this is somewhat like a hummingbird supposed to look. Whoops! Uh, and you know, you're going to have these moments, but it's about having fun with the grandkids, and we'll post how to do this thing uh, we'll put together where Birdman Mail hasn't tore it apart. Okay, don't, and hand me that last stack there. So where are we at? Kids' corner. Oh, chin. Okay, hint here. Here's a little map. Take a look at it. It shows you, you guys all around the country, ruby throats. Hey, we're east of the Rockies. Black chin. Those boys, I tell you what, from Texas West, they absolutely love the hummingbird helper nesting material. Our rubies kind of get it, but I tell you what, everywhere, the chickadees, other stuff, uh, not chickadees so much as the finches, we'll use it later. And as Rufus, they're all on there. So look that up. So the grand prize winner, you got to send in, the first one to send in, all the species of hummingbirds that I talked about in the most common one. So answer both those questions, and you win that grand prize. Remember that big old thing I had, the humming, it'll be the baffle, the, the stained glass hook on top of it. I like these to hang baskets and stuff too. That whole contraption with the world's best feeder ant moat, you're going to win that thing, okay? Uh, if you don't know a supplier in your area, reach out to us. Uh, we've got a, a site up uh, and our email us and we'll let you know. Uh, but we're going to try to get it to where you can pick up all these prizes there instead of us shipping them all over. But we'll get them to you. And as I close, I just want to, uh, here in central Missouri, remind you guys all to uh, go to places like Callaway Fields here in Mexico, uh, uh, Giving Gardens in Columbia, Longfellows down in Centertown, and Hawthorne Nursery, the Missouri native plants thing. And I want to shout out to the Boonsleck Match Nat Master Naturalist. I was so happy to hear that this program is an approved part of your training to be a certified naturalist. So I am tickled to death to have you. Those folks in Songbird Station, give us a call, give us an email. We're ready to safely deliver your animal feed and see needs to your door or have them picked up on the curb just like everybody all over there. Okay, in a second I'm going to give details on next week's post and we'll, uh, I want to announce some prizes. Uh, I guess Christine, R-A-B-A-L-A-I-S-G-U-E-Y-D-A-N. Sorry, I don't know how to say that. You're the winner of the binoculars. All right, these guys right here, they got other ones less expensive. We'll have them on a program later just on optics for you to learn, okay? But I got to do my little note here, folks. Uh, before I sign off from beautiful Mexico, Missouri, there is really such a place. We call it 
the main street of the Midwest. I just really want to thank all the great people here that support us. I want to thank those that uh, buy from us at Songbird Station. You help keep it going. Thank our employees. God bless you. And I'm, I want to say I'm sorry. And with the help of the folks in this audience, hope to bring back those of you that aren't with us. And huge special thanks to Kaylee and her technical staff and the IT people and all that. I got Ben sitting out in the driveway. I was scared to death doing this thing. Thought it might go down. So thank you, Ben, for sitting out there. Okay. So next week, we're going to talk about Orioles and other brilliant migrators. So I told you, more free press. You want to stay on to the very end. What bird is this? And what are three different foods that you can put out for this bird to help attract it? Okay. Two other birds that we're going to talk about next week. And what fruits would you put on something like this to attract that old boy and a lot of other birds? And two other birds that we're going to talk about because they eat different seeds in different places. This boy here, okay, give you a hit. Bunting, which one? Okay, it's our pet, uh, Margaret, it's one of our uh, birds that she does. So I'd like to have it a little bit different, but hey, we, it's about using one mold, going different directions. And National Wildlife Federation said this is good enough for them, so it's good enough for me. Uh, and this guy here, kind of up in the treetops a lot, but this bird will eat some fruit, okay? So we'll talk about all those guys coming in next week. Okie dokie. And they do eat different things in different places. So thanks so much. Keep those questions coming. We're going to continue to answer them. I, I do my best to keep answering them, getting them to you. And uh, please go see your local wild bird supplier. Give us a holler at Songbird Station. And stay safe. Take time to spend five minutes in one spot. And remember, nature is a stress reliever from God. Take time today to listen to the birds sing. Hope I didn't go too long. You were hanging on, so I kept a talking. See you next week.